Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Russian forensics company Elcomsoft that has made a name for itself with the analysis of, for example, iPhones and iCloud data has released a new feature that allows investigators to retrieve a copy of the Apple keychain from iCloud backups. Now, while this sounds bad, it's actually not a vulnerability and comes with quite a few requirements. Uh, investigator first needs the username and password to access iCloud and also needs a trusted device that was synced with iCloud in order to unlock the keychain. Also, iOS and OS X will not store the keychain with iCloud unless two-factor authentication is enabled. Well, what this really means is that you have to be careful with your iCloud credentials if you do store your keychain within iCloud. That should be obvious in some way. That's true for any kind of password manager that does store credentials in the cloud. You, the security of these credentials is pretty much always linked to the security of the passphrase that you use to authenticate. The iCloud option isn't so far probably better than some of these keychain managers in that it does require two-factor authentication via a trusted device. Now, Elcomsoft also announced that they will implement the ability to download the keychain using an authentication token that can be retrieved from a PC or a Mac that is authenticated to iCloud. This could be a little bit more problematic uh, because that's a file that uh, could probably be stolen using malware. Another issue, of course, with all of these cloud-based password managers is that the user has little visibility in who is accessing their keychain using the cloud backup. There are typically no easy accessible logs for the end user. Now, one of the interesting new privacy threats that is associated with increasing home automation is the ability of many of these devices to map rooms. Now, a few weeks back, there was some release from Roomba. Roomba apparently did submit back to the manufacturer detailed layouts of various rooms and buildings that its automated vacuum cleaners were cleaning. And uh, we just have a new paper that outlines how smart speakers and smartphones can be used to map out rooms, including where people are actually positioned within that room. The way this works is that uh, the smart speaker is tricked into playing essentially music with specific tones superimposed to this music and a smartphone anywhere in the room is then picking up reflections from these very specific frequencies. So it's sort of an echo location principle that is being used here to map out two-dimensionally a room and apparently is able to identify multiple individuals within the room and how they're moving around in the room and where they are located. Of course, techniques like this are sometimes used by smart speakers, for example, to adjust themselves in order to optimize the sound emission for a particular room ge geometry. And then of course, with the smart vacuum cleaners, that data is also used in order to make them more efficient. Now, the smart speaker system actually had some limited success even locating individuals behind walls and at some distance behind the particular wall, separating the speaker from the individual. And when it comes to phishing and malicious content, I often have mentioned new generic top-level domains as a favorite hangout for this kind of activity. Netcraft has an interesting twist on it, how the .fish and .phishing generic top-level domains are actually used at times to host phishing sites. And in the latest case that was observed by Netcraft, actually right on the homepage of the particular site, Website. Parser .fish was an actual website dedicated to host malicious phishing content. Maybe the victims were confused that the top level domain is actually spelled .fish, so fish not 
P-H-I-S-H, how the malicious fish is usually spelled. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.